Hey everyone, Madrybread here. The big Pokemon Black 2 Christmas run was a really fun holiday special to make. Now let's follow that up with a single Pokemon run. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Gold with a team of only one Larvitar? Man, you guys have been asking for this one for a while. Larvitar is kind of like the Dratini of this game. It's the weak first form of a pseudo-legendary. Although his final form is Rock and Dark, Larvitar himself is Ground and Rock, so I expect Water and Grass moves to be a pretty big problem. Plus, he's in the slow leveling category, so he requires a brutal 250,000 extra experience points to hit max level. That's 25% more experience than the most common leveling category. His stats are just slightly below that of a first form starter, having very even stats with a slight boost to attack and cut to speed. For our moveset, we learn some pretty cool stuff by level up. Having bite from the start means that we can hit ghosts, and getting both rock slide and earthquake is pretty awesome. To make up for that though, our TM moves aren't really that great. Our only hope for any type coverage out of this would be hidden power, and that's just total luck. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. With Rock Slide in my moveset, I'm feeling pretty good about my chances against Lance, but knowing that I'm gonna have to fight Red's Blastoise and Venusaur at the end of the game does have me worried. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Larvitar, I'll need other Pokémon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokémon battles, no glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokéballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Cyndaquil with Larvitar so that we can do the whole run with it. I replaced Cyndaquil so that our rival would have Feraligator, which I figure is probably the hardest for us to fight. Larvitar is a kaiju monster, so let's go with Freakzilla. Holler in the comments if you hear that. For the record, it was between this, Samoa Joe, and Jax Dane. So the first route isn't bad since we're mostly getting hit by normal moves and we're part rock type. Since our stats are about on par with first form starters, and that's what the game expects us to have, this area is reasonably balanced for us. I don't think we're going to have any real issues in the first bit of the game unless Falconer spams Mud Slap, and he doesn't usually use it very much. I did give Bellsprout Tower a try, by the way. Yeah, it's dangerous since we take four times damage from grass moves, we didn't really get that far. It's alright, the experience we would have gotten here was pretty much nothing anyway, I'll just grab Flash from here later when it's easier. After that is the Flying Gym. Now this might be a first, but the Flying Gym was actually really hard. They just spammed Mud Slap the whole time, and although it didn't do amazing damage, it completely ruins our accuracy. Yes, I'm actually going to have to grind to prepare for Falkner. This feels weird. Take 2, this time at level 13. This time Pidgey went down much faster, but Pidgeotto still had me pretty worried. We had to rely on some luck to even hit with our bites, but we did win on the first try at this level. So it's time to head south to Union Cave. The route was pretty easy, although it's probably just because I avoided the trainer with a whooper, knowing that he'd probably one-shot us with Water Gun. As we get into Union Cave, we had to fight the hiker that usually gives us issues, but thanks to Bite using Special Attack in this game, it actually makes pretty short work of his Geodudes. On the other side is Slowpoke Well and the Bug Gym. You'd think Team Rocket in the well would be easy since we mostly resist their moves, but they can still poison us and confuse us so it's not perfectly smooth. Still, it's much needed experience before Bugsy. Alright, Bug Gym time. Metapod was pretty easy, as you'd probably expect. Then he sent out Scyther second. I don't think I've actually ever seen him do that before. Well, Fury Cutter built up some power pretty quickly and was able to take us down because our bites are really just that weak. We're only a few levels away from Rock Slide, I'll probably be able to sweep him after that. Before the grind though, let's try a rival fight. Ghastly was a one-shot with a bite, but then he sent in Croconaw. I thought I was going to make some progress when he used Rage, but then he switched to Water Gun and we didn't stand a chance. Alright, Rock Slide is a must. The grind is already really slow, by the way. The slow leveling category means we need 25% more experience, so essentially every single grind session is roughly 25% longer. We actually get extra grind sessions out of this sometimes too, not just longer grind sessions, because sometimes the trainers are enough experience to be able to fight the next gym naturally, but they aren't when you have this slow of a leveling Pokemon. I'm just thankful that at least we can one-shot everything we bite around here, because grinding without one-shotting with a slow leveling Pokemon is just miserable. Back at the bug gym with Rockslide, and we totally destroyed his whole team. That's what I like to see. 
Out to the rival fight, this time we had rock slides, so we only had to take one water gun and hit two rock slides to win. Zubat was next, and we missed our first attack, but he could hardly hurt us, so we still won. That is one annoying thing about rock slide, though. 90 accuracy. On the other side of the Elix Forest, we get to this route with tons of trainers south of Goldenrod. Whitney is normally brutal, but in this run, we actually are going to resist her Miltank's moves, so I think it'll go well. Still, I go through the trouble of clearing out most of the trainers. Knowing that we need 25% more experience to level up has me worried, and I don't want to get stuck grinding for hours later in the run if I can help it. As soon as we got to Goldenrod, I went ahead and got the TM for return. I don't actually know if I want to use this yet, since Earthquake and Rockside will probably cover most of what I'd used Return for, but there's no harm in grabbing this while I have the chance. It's not actually Sunday, by the way. I just told the game that it was. Shh. Don't tell Nintendo. Hey, it's normal gym time. Clefairy was a one-shot with Rockside, so we didn't have to worry about any kind of metronome shenanigans, and right away Miltank flinched us with a stomp. She started her rollout, and it builds power as it goes, but it also keeps her from using Milk Drink, so we ended up having a really easy time finishing her off. So there's a few gyms coming up that I'd love a ground move for, but Earthquake isn't till level 50, and the TM for Earthquake is in Victory Road, so I decided to go get the TM for Dig from the National Park. It's not super strong like it is in Gen 1, but I'll take what I can get. Alright, Ghost Gym time! Thanks mostly to how Curse doesn't work for some reason while we're underground, we had an easy time. Gengar's faster than us, and he did try to put us to sleep, but Hypnosis only has 55 accuracy, so even if it hit, it wouldn't be that hard to just try the fight a few times. I'm just happy Marty uses all poison types. With that done, I go straight to the Kimono Girls dance hall to get Surf. Gyms 5 and 6 are both west, but I want to surf to the east where Gym 7 is. Partly because I want to take down the Rocket Hideout first for levels, and partly because Rock Slide will do great in the Ice Gym. Plus, we need extra experience. There's a fighting gym that we have to deal with eventually. The rocket hideout itself is easy as usual. This place can take a while, and we have to heal sometimes, but overall, it's just easy experience. I'm actually happy that I held on to bite this long. It comes in handy against a surprising amount of enemies in this run. On the other end is the ice gym. First is Seal, who went down to one rock slide, then came in Pillaswine. We missed the first rock slide, but then he used Mist for some reason. Doesn't he have, like, real ice moves? I hit next time, and he used Fury Attack? Yeah, I'm looking this up. Yeah! Yeah, he has Icy Wind and Blizzard! He didn't even try to use either of those for so long that we took him down. Last was his Dugong, who's a one-shot. What was that fight? With that done, I finally head west. There's a lot of travel here since we have to climb up a lighthouse full of trainers twice before I can actually challenge the Steel Gym, and because we can't get fly till after the fighting gym, I'm basically doing this in the most travel-heavy way possible, but we really do need to save the fighting gym for last. Unless we want to learn Return, the best move I've got for it is Dig, so we need the levels first. Alright, Steel Gym time. I give this one a few tries, but even with Steelix missing Iron Tail, it's just not happening. Dig is super effective against her whole team, but her Steelix just has so much defense. Plus, he nearly one-shots us with Iron Tail. Okay, let's try the Fighting Gym first. So I give the Fighting Gym a try a few times, and although Primeape is super easy, Polyrath just one-shots us with Surf. Alright, I see how it is. So, we have to grind. We're not super far from getting Earthquake, and that's for sure going to win us both of the gym fights we're stuck on. But again, we level so slow that it's farther than it looks. This place isn't too bad to grind in, since Mantine and Tentacruel give good experience, at least. Alright, at level 45, I try the Fighting Gym again, and although we didn't have Earthquake yet, we did exactly enough damage to two-shot Polyrath, and we had exactly enough health to land at two health from Surf, instead of just being one-shot. This is literally the earliest level I could win this fight at without a crit, I guess. After that is the Steel Gym again. I was really worried we'd just lose again, because it looked like our first dig did less than half of their health and damage, but the second one knocked them out anyway, so I guess they were in a damage range. We outsped and one-shot both Magnemites, so we can finally make some progress. The second we get out of there, we're called in to handle the Team Rocket takeover of Radio Tower, because the police don't care, I guess. Like usual, this place isn't really an issue, mostly because they love poison types and we have ground moves. Everyone knows the only real fight in here is the rival fight, so let's get to that. So Golbat was one shot with Rock Slide right off the bat. 
Sorry, I just really wanted to make it clear that was a pun. <laughs> I felt that was important. Frolligator was second, and he messed us up really bad with Water Gun, but we still two-shot him. Sneasel was faster than us, but Faint Attack didn't hit too hard before going down in one hit, and Haunter only took one dig. Again, just happy that Curse doesn't work while we're underground. Anyway, Dig took out Magnemite as well, so that's another rival fight down. With that done, we have to make our way over to the Dragon Gem. First is this little route that I always forget the name of with the lake. You know, the one before Icy Path. Normally I don't bring this place up very much since it's not really difficult, but I wanted to talk about it this time just to point out that I almost always end up running into a bunch of trainers here, even though I'm trying to skip them most of the time. Remembering to avoid these guys is significantly harder than just doing the ice puzzle in this place. On the other side of the path is the Dragon Gym. Unfortunately, it goes kinda how I thought it would. We outspeed and one-shot the Dragonairs, but Kingdra can just one-shot us with Surf. Well, Surf can't miss, so we're either trying until we get a crit, I need to get strong enough to one-shot her, or we need to be able to survive a Surf. I decided to grind at least a little bit. It's really slow at this point, but I get the feeling this is pretty much unavoidable. If we're having this many troubles just running into a Pokemon with Surf, then we're gonna have some real issues with the Elite Four after this. We don't have any moveset upgrades that I can think of outside of Hidden Power, and even if that's super effective against Kingdra, I doubt we could get it to faint. Uh, you know what, why don't we give it a try? Okay, I grabbed Hidden Power from the Lake of Rage. Let's test the type. Okay, it's neutral against Caterpie, neutral against Pidgey, neutral against Tentacruel. This is dark, isn't it? Yep, it's super effective against Giraffe Rig. Ugh. All right, I'm keeping Screech. <laughs> A few levels later and we're at Kingdra again, but this time I used Rock Slide until she flinched, winning us literally the entire fight. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't think of doing that 25 minutes ago, but here we are. With the Dragon Gym done, we have to make our way to the Elite Four. There's tons of trainers on the way there, and I make sure to fight as many of them as I can. This actually took ages because there's an area here that has a lot of strong water types, but it was still totally worth it. Freakzilla has potential to be strong, he just needs a lot of extra experience to make it happen. Okay, last before the Elite Four is one more rival fight. We're faster than Sneasel this time, so we take it down in one hit, and Feraligator still hits us with his dreaded water gun. It's just under 70 damage this time, so it's not that bad. He went down, and his new Kadabra went down in one crunch. Magneton can't handle Earthquake, neither can Haunter, and Golbat was a one-shot with Rock Slide. Yeah, the rival isn't usually too much of an issue in this game. Here's our stats before the Elite Four. Our attack is good, but everything else is pretty underwhelming for a level 60. Honestly, I'm sure we can one-shot most of what we're super effective against, even if we're only at 131 attack but I'm sure it's only going to take one decent water or grass move to completely shut us down. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Psychic Trainer Will. Rockslide took down Zatu in one hit, but knowing that we couldn't one-shot Executor, I went for Rockslide and actually got a flinch, so he never hit us. Jinx was a one-shot with Rockslide. I'm honestly a little surprised that I'm faster than her. Slowbro's next, and I was worried since he's tanky and I figured he'd use a water move, but he used Curse, and he's not a ghost, so we just beat him. Last was another Zatu, but this time he missed the first Rockslide and got confused. It didn't matter, the follow-up was a hit. Second is Poison Trainer Koga. Ariados was a one-shot with Rockslide, but second was Fortress. I was worried he'd be too tanky, but Earthquake actually did great damage, and he just used Spikes. As Crobat came out, he tried for double team, but Rockslide landed a one shot before he could properly build them up. Muck was a one shot with Earthquake, and Venomoth was a one shot with Rockslide. Easy fight? Third is Fighting Trainer Bruno. For Hitmon top, we Earthquake for a one shot. Same with Hitmonlee. Hitmonchan used Mock Punch, a fighting type quick attack, so that's damage we can't really avoid. It wasn't much though, and we got a one shot on him. Machamp is next, and we took it to red health in one hit, but his cross chop took us down. That's not a 100 accuracy move. Let's try this a few more times. After a few more tries, we ended up just surviving Cross Chop with only two health left. He used a max potion, but of course he went down on the follow-up. Last was Onyx, who was a one-shot, so that's Bruno down. Fourth is Dark Trainer Karen. Her whole team were just a bunch of one-shots with Earthquake and Rock Slide. And here I was worried about Vile Plume. Finally, the Pokemon Champion Lance. First is his Water Onyx, who we one-shot with Rock Slide. That's the strategy, by the way. Lots of rock slide. It's a one-shot on the first Dragonite, but his second Dragonite was level 50, who hung on with a bit of health left. We took a pretty big chunk of damage from Outrage before we finished him off. 
Aerodactyl is faster than us and did a bit of damage, but one rock slide still took it down. Charizard's double weak to rock, but our first rock slide actually missed, making us go down to yellow health from Flamethrower. We hit him with rock slide right after to take him down on the follow up. Last was the third Dragonite, but this one went down in one hit. With that victory, we get into the Hall of Fame and win the run, but you know it's not over yet. In gold, there's all of Kanto to do. You probably wouldn't be interested in seeing most of this, since seven of the eight gem leaders are weaker than the Elite Four we just beat, but there's always the big battles with red and blue. First with blue. He starts with Pidgeot, so naturally we just rock sliding down. Executor had me really worried as he started charging Solar Beam, but thanks to a crit on Crunch, we were actually able to two-shot him before he could hit us. Alakazam is faster than us and took out almost half of our health with Psychic before I earthquaked him. Rhydon was next, but he's actually tanky enough that we couldn't one-shot him even with a super effective move. His own Earthquake, on the other hand, did a great job of making us faint. So this was a really rough fight, but I felt like it was still possible, so I kept making attempts over and over. Most of the time we just go down because Earthquake did so much damage to us and Alakazam already softens us up, but one of the attempts Alakazam finally did something different by using Reflect. Thanks to that, we didn't take damage from him, but his following Rhydon did have a lot more health after our Earthquake since Reflect was still around. He nearly took us down, but we crit on the second one to make him faint. As Water Onyx came out, Reflect was still up, so he survived a Rock Slide, but he flinched and Reflect faded, so we were able to finish him off. Last was RK9, but we were actually faster and one-shot him with Earthquake. I can't believe we won that. Alright, so all that's left is red, but I think it's pretty obvious that we're not strong enough yet. Let's at least try the fight a few times, and just see what we can do right now. So, right as the fight starts, Pikachu is already faster than us and hits Charm, so our attack is down the entire fight. That's about what I expected, to be honest. He went down to Earthquake, by the way, but we got completely demolished by Espeon. It really wasn't close. Okay, so just to pull back the curtain a little bit as I make attempts. So the day that I'm recording this is Christmas Eve 2021, and I'm desperately trying to cram all of my work in tonight so that I don't have to work on Christmas Day. I mean, I'm gonna have to be at the Christmas Challenge premiere, and technically that's work, but y you know what I mean. I don't want to be stuck working at Christmas the whole day when I could be hanging out with my mom and sister, you know? Anyway, at the start of December, I asked you guys in a normal moves only run about rare candy cheats and if they should be allowed in the post game. The overwhelming majority of you guys said that you're 100% fine with it in the post game, since it's a lot more fun than just ending if I don't have time to grind. A lot of you also said to just use rare candy cheats whenever I want, but I don't know if I want to go crossing that bridge yet. Anyway, point is that I want to have Christmas off this year, and I never do because I have to work too much every single year for the last decade. So I'm going to consider all of you guys telling me to cheat in rare candies to be my Christmas gift from you to me this year, so thank you very much. Now I need to figure out how to actually use the cheats in this emulator. If it's anything like trying to get mods to work on WWF No Mercy as a kid, then I expect this to be an absolute disaster. I've already made a backup save, let's give this a try. <laughs> okay, so the first result on Google for Pokemon Gold Rare Candy Cheat brought me to a big page of cheats, and the unlimited rare candy cheat one looks... a little bit vague? Also, the cheats menu here seems to be on hard mode. I don't know if maybe I'm just dumb, but I can't make sense of exactly what button on the right I'm supposed to press to insert the cheat, and what ones are just... empty folders, I think? Anyway, I ended up hitting add, and it put the code into what I believe to be an untitled folder, then I went back into the game. At first I thought it didn't work because I didn't see any in my inventory, but then I cycled over to my key items pocket and oh my god, it's a Christmas miracle! My coin case turned into seven rare candies. Whoops, hope I didn't need that anymore. <laughs> I have no idea why it says seven, but the number doesn't go down when we use it, so whatever, I guess it works. Let's use this power responsibly and only jump up five levels at a time. If we max out our level and we still can't win after a ton of tries, then maybe I'll just try it with Double Team. Double Team still takes forever to win with, but I can't get lazy just because it's Christmas Eve. You guys gave me the present of this cheat, so I gotta try my best. Okay, so at level 75, Pikachu is faster than us and hit Charm, so I thought that Espeon would win, but we lucked out and crit it for a one-shot. Wow! 
Well, it put up Reflect, so when we get to Venusaur, we can hardly do anything at all. One Solar Beam took us down. Reflect and Charm really just annihilated our attack. At level 80, we still got outsped and hit with Charm, but this time we never crit Espeon, so we didn't even go as long as the previous run. We really need to be faster. At level 85, we're still too slow and once again only beat Espeon thanks to a lucky crit, just to get taken down by Venusaur. Can you see why I wouldn't have time to grind enough for this fight? At level 90, we finally outsped Pikachu, so he was easy, and we're finally good enough at tanking Espeon's Psychics that we could take it down pretty fast too. Against Venusaur, we did decent damage, but not enough for a two-shot. Seeing that he was charging Solar Beam and knowing that we needed a crit or a flinch, I tried for Rock Slide, but no luck, we still went down. A few more levels and Earthquake would probably get a two-shot. At level 95, we ended up doing way more damage to Venusaur, so a two-shot is finally possible. Against Blastoise, we still did tons of damage, and I was feeling good, but Surf just straight up made us faint. I kinda thought we could hang on from that. Alright, max level it is. At level 100, we can one-shot Espeon, so we always get to Blastoise with full health, and despite that, Surf still one-shots us! With full health at level 100! Alright, I'm gonna try for Rock Slide flinches then. I'm not losing to this guy, this has gotta be winnable. Four tries later, and we finally got Blastoise to flinch. It was easy to finish him off with Earthquake after that. Fifth is Snorlax, and I was worried since he's usually a crazy, tanky brick wall, but our Earthquake did tons of damage, and all he did was buff his special defense with Amnesia, so it was an easy two-shot. Last was Charizard, and he's double weak to Rock Slide, so we hit it for the win! That was a crazy run. It felt really weird having to grind in some pretty unexpected spots because of the low experience gains, and being both rock and ground type really did make us faint quickly to some otherwise weak moves. That said, having Earthquake and Rock Slide helped a ton, and there were some parts of the game that were normally slow that we did get through faster than expected. I really hope you guys liked that run! Next run will be in two weeks on Saturday, I need a little bit of time to recover after the holiday season. I'm not really sure what the run is gonna be yet, so I'll leave that as a mystery. It'll be the super late present from the relative you never see. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions, though, in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. You guys seem to like when I just go off script at the end and just kind of talk about whatever's going on in my week. Um, you seem to really like it, actually, when I've been doing it lately. It seems like so many of the comments are about that, and to be honest, I was a little bit surprised just because, you know, I, I see the analytics of my videos and I know that in this whole, like, outro bit, Normally, you have this massive drop-off, you know, that's when people stop clicking, and fair, I mean, you saw me beat the challenge already. Um, but that's why I'm so surprised I'm getting so many comments saying that you guys like that part, is just so few of you ever even see that part, so it's not the thing that would get commented about very much. But if you want me to keep doing it, I'm happy to keep doing it. Um, I'm hopefully recording some Mario Party this week. The week I'm recording the voiceover, by the way, God, it, see, if I start giving you any kind of like, hey, this is going on now, by the time the video goes up, it's not going to be relevant anymore. All you need to know is there's some, probably some Mario Party already on the channel that I have not recorded yet at the time of the voiceover, but is probably already up by the time of this video, who knows? I feel like we need a name for this outro thing, whatever we want to call this, and I'm really tempted to go with Royal Ramble. I always thought that would be the name of a wrestling podcast if I ever hosted my own. I was on a wrestling podcast for years, the Hero is Wrestling podcast. That was a fun time, actually. Uh, don't think it's around anymore, though. Royal Ramble is what I called it when I did that one big wrestling pay-per-view with Gabriel Morton forever ago. I want to say that was like 2018... Right, no, it was Survivor Series, because it was the one where everyone teamed up to suplex Braun Strowman through a table, and Michael Cole just started stuttering like crazy on commentary, and he had the wildest call. It was insanity. <laughs> uh, but once again, no one knows what I'm talking about if you don't watch very specific wrestling shows from years ago. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm wasting your time at this point. Okay, okay, I'm having fun, but I can't ramble forever, because no one wants this video to be extended by a million minutes just because of an outro, one, and two, I do have other stuff to go work on. So I'm gonna go get prepared for my week, I'm gonna hopefully stream a whole lot this week. We'll see, you already know where my Twitch is, it's in the description, sometimes I stream on YouTube, sometimes I stream on Twitch, just whatever. <laughs> Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.